Last week I built this belt grinder and in this week's video I'm going to give you a quick overview of how it works, what functions this has and things I should have done a little bit different during the build. It's running on a powerful 3 horsepower 2.2 kilowatt motor that runs at 3000 rpm. I've connected that motor to this VFD so I can adjust the speed. For, for metal and stuff like that I can put it full speed and when I need to grind wood or plastics or anything like that I can put it a lot slower so you won't burn the material. With this I'm reaching surface speeds of up to 20 meters per second. That's um, for steel you could go faster but it's a good range for speed as I've shown with um, with this belt and some metal it really eats it away and the motor is super powerful so I have not managed to stop it yet. That's probably because as a guideline they say you should go, go one horsepower for every inch of belt width. Well my belt is two inch and the motor is three horsepower so that's actually one horsepower over spec so but I would definitely recommend it it's not so much more expensive and it's a beast like this so I'm really happy with that so this is the setting I probably will have it most of the time with the thing straight with the back plate a grinding surface here and like this but you can also there's a knob on this side I'll show you later take the table off and then you could adjust this for example put it on an angle you can also do this with the table by the way like this now you can cut 45 degrees let's put it back this one over here locks this movement and this one over here is for the table which you can adjust as well And then over here you have another knob that you can use to set this upright. Then let me take the belt off. Right over here is the grinding plate. It probably has a different name, but the back plate, the grinding plate. And with these two knobs over here, you can push it all the way back. You could even take it off. But you put it all the way to the back it's out of the way and you can grind that way you can grind without supports in my build video I said that I had a plunger over here, uh, which I had at that time, that if you pull this, the plunger would lock and it would stay in place. And it did exactly that. But the spring is so strong for that type of plunger that I would have needed a much bigger plunger. On this plunger, when I locked it like this, I could never get it loose. So I used the center punch to actually push it out. So that, mm, my first idea was then to optimize it, make the hole a little bit larger so you would have the room to loosen it but it was also hitting this wheel and I was actually not using it it was another handling that I needed to while changing a belt which you don't need this is actually really easy so I took off the plunger you don't need it apart from that you can also change this one and I'm pretty sure that you can also fit a 2x72 2 by 72 it is I think belt on it if you extend it all the way to the front like this but I don't have that much room here so I just stay with the 2 times 48 belt put the belt back on So you put it on those two wheels, on this wheel, you pull it forward and you can push it on the last wheel. It's actually really easy. Then if you turn this button you can align the belt on the wheels, I'll show you. Then 
Then what's also really cool, if, if you're grinding wood or something else that needs to be grinded flat, you can adjust it here, loosen it up, and put the whole thing on its side. This way, when you take this off, then if you take the table off, you have a nice horizontal belt grinder. Super nice. For wood or something, you can use the radius over here. And then like this, you have a nice inside radius you can grind or sand with. Super sweet. So during the build, if you might remember, I welded this thing up exactly the wrong way around. It has two plates basically, that needs to be like this. And I made it so you can fit it together like a puzzle and then weld. And apparently it also fits exactly the wrong way around. So that's what I did. And then I tried to place it and I realized it. So I had to grind the lugs off that are now on this side. They were on that side, grind them off, weld them back on. and. It works, but I welded them on a little bit on an angle, so it took me some, some work to get it working and it's still not completely straight, so I have to adjust the tracking wheel quite a bit to get it running right. So next time I'm ordering sheet metal, I'm ordering an extra set of this so I can fix it, but for now it works. Something else that I realized just after this is that even if you put it really tight here, you screw it really tight it has some play then when you start it up at lower speed it starts to wobble a bit and that's just from this all the other stuff is really solid so I do want to keep the flexible connection because I think that's really nice but on the back here I also have another slot and I'm not using that right now so what I need to do I need to take this whole thing off put Got threads in here and I think if I put another bolt right there it will be fixed so let's do that straight away If you don't need the tilting mechanism, you can actually move it like mount it like this. Just screw the motor to your workbench and it's even smaller. I wanted the tilting so I made the whole stand for it, but it's not necessary. That was not so much work. Everything together, the machine cost me about 950 to 1000 euro to make and yeah a lot of the parts can be quite expensive for example the wheels they cost me about 150 and then the motor was a little 150 the VFD is 150 so that's already 450 euros then for the sheet metal I actually pay way too much for the sheet metal I found out later I paid about 250 euros for it, but I've couldn't, I could have gotten it for 100 if I should have used the right shop. So when you're buying sheet metal, shop around, because it can save you a lot of money. But 
but it's often that machines like this when you build one of them they are really expensive and if you then buy four sets of sheet metal it gets a lot cheaper so I'm thinking to actually make a build uh, kit I, the build plans are already on my website but I'm thinking to make a kit so that way I can order big sets of things and then sell it a bit cheaper to you all so if that's something you're interested in let me know in the comments and if there's enough people I will consider making a kit but the motor and stuff like that will still be expensive you can also go buy a one phase motor which is about half the money because you don't need the VFD so you just pay like 130, 140 euros for the motor but then you just have one speed and with the VFD it costs a little bit more but you have multiple speeds so for plastics you can actually run it lower apart from the little changes and the little mess up that I made with the welding I'm super happy with how it turned out it's a beast and yeah it just goes And as you can see, it's very heavy. But that's a good thing. The thing needs some mass. So that's why I went with 8mm steel. So it would be rock solid. And I think I managed to achieve that. If you want a belt grinder like this and you don't want to design it yourself, check out my website. I have a full set of build plans available that includes all the files that you can send directly to a metal laser cutter, links to the parts that I used and instructions on how to put it together. So saves yourself a lot of trouble and gives you an awesome belt grinder. I'm also thinking of making a kit. If I make a kit, I can buy the things like the sheet metal and the aluminum profiles a lot cheaper because I'm buying a whole lot of them, saving a lot of money and saving you the hassle of trying to source all the parts yourself. So if you're interested in buying a kit so you can make one of these awesome belt grinders yourself, let me know in the comments, send me a message. If enough people do so, I will consider making a kit and let you all know. What's super cool and what I didn't know before is that you also have scotch Bright belt for this. So to polish parts, etc. This is perfect. Look at this. Super easy. So for any surface conditioning, deburring, Scotch Bright belts are awesome. Altogether, I'm super happy with the machine. It's rock solid and it just does what it needs to do so super happy with that I'm not sure what I'm gonna use it for yet because I'm not a knife maker or anything like that that I would need a tool like this but I think since I now have it I will find a lot of uses for it if you want to make one like this yourself consider checking out the plans on my website I have linked it below and hit that subscribe button before you leave and don't forget dare to experiment and have fun creating see you next week